everybody, welcome to the Dano channel. I am Dano, and I'm back with another video, this time about Disney. Surprise, surprise. More Disney, all you can Disney. Everyday Disney. Well, today I wanted to talk to you guys about my own personal Disney history. Like many lucky kids around the world, very privileged lucky kids, I got to go to Disneyland a few times as a child. But the thing is, I don't really remember them. Like, I went when I was two, supposedly. There's pictures, that's why I say supposedly, because there's proof somewhere. Uh, and I went again when I was six. When I was six, it was 1989, I believe, or 1990, somewhere around there. Spring of 1990, it was the 35th anniversary of Disneyland. They had all kinds of cool promotions. There was fancy floats with like uh, Minnie Mouse dressed like Carmen Miranda with the fruit basket on her head. They were like big, it was like carnival kind of themed. And I vaguely remember some of that, but I also remember the marketing more than I remember going. Uh, I, one memory I do have from that was I saw the Roger Rabbit character walking around Main Street and I took off running because Roger Rabbit was my jam when I was little, still is kind of. Um, but I took off running and my mom got really scared because I kind of lost her for a little while. But she knew that I was there right by Roger Rabbit because anytime there was characters that were there I would just pew, take right off. And I don't think much has changed, to be honest, I still kind of do the same thing. So let's skip all the way ahead to the year 2000, in the year 2000, which is my next big trip to Disneyland. In fact, I hadn't been since I was six. So in this case, I was, I think, f sophomore year of high school, something like that. Kids, as you get older, the years don't matter nearly as much. Just a heads up. You'll learn one day. Um, I think it was sophomore year, I had a new girlfriend, it's actually one of my first like real girlfriends that I had, and her family was one of those families that went to Disneyland every year in the summer, and they'd invited me to come along, and I was like, yeah, sure, Disneyland, I haven't been since like, I was six years old, here I was like, I think either 16, maybe 17, something around there, I can't do math, um, but I, I was like, yeah, let's do this, let's go, it'll be really cool, and at the time, I lived in New Mexico, Albuquerque, New Mexico, which is like pretty much almost the center, not quite the center, but very middle of the United States. So going from Albuquerque, New Mexico to Anaheim, California, it was, it's kind of a, kind of a long ways to go. Uh, it was a long trip, it was like a nine hour drive. But it was cool, because it was like the first like big trip I'd gone on without my parents. So that was pretty cool. Either way, we get there and they had booked a room at the Candy Cane Inn. Now the Candy Cane Inn is right there in the corner of Harbor and Catella. And it is like a really, really gorgeous mom and pop hotel. It's not owned by some big business. It's not like Best Western or any of those other branded hotels. It is family owned and it is gorgeous. If you ever like stay in the Disneyland area, you're not from Anaheim or whatever, or even if you're from SoCal and you wanna go on a staycation where you actually get a hotel room, I would recommend Candy Cane Inn. They're not a sponsor. They're no way telling me to say this. I just really like the rooms. I like. The delicious breakfast in the morning was really cool. I was like, oh sweet, we got like full on like, you know, breakfast. Bagels and fruit and cereal and all that good stuff. And I was like, this is awesome, this is a perfect way to start my day. And now, for someone living in the desert and spending most of their time in the desert, most of their lives, or middle of America, I lived in New Mexico, Texas, a little while in Oklahoma, uh, and I bounced around between that little general area for quite a while. But Albuquerque was my home, and for going from the desert of Albuquerque, all the way out to Anaheim, which I had not seen or been to in a ton of years, at least 10 years, maybe more at that point. And seeing palm trees and just all, how green and beautiful everything was. Again, this was the first week of June. This is my first ticket to Disneyland. It's marked June 5th, 2000, June 6th, 2000, and June 7th, 2000. This is my three-day park hopper pass, which back in the 2000s, or year 2000, cost $76 for three days. 76 bucks is all it costs to go for three days. You can't even go to one park for one day for that much anymore. And this is what it was in June 5th, my very like first real trip as a coherent human being. No offense, kids, but you're probably not gonna remember it. Um, <laughs> it's like my first real trip as like a human being it was June 5th, 2000, and that's it, like from there, it was all over. It was all over, that just, it changed my world. It really did change my world going there. Um, some of the things like I'd really noticed and started to take in were those details. 
and this was in 2000, so it was before California Adventure had opened up. It was just Disneyland. And I remember actually the first day when we arrived, we drove from Albuquerque, and we got there probably about six or seven at night, and we didn't want to use the first day of our park hopper because it would have been kind of a waste of a day. So what we ended up doing, we just kind of walked around what was before Downtown Disney. It wasn't Downtown Disney yet. Uh, but you could still like walk over to like the gate area, kind of look around. The entire parking lot that is now California Adventure was walled off because they were doing construction, but it wasn't California Adventure yet. It was just walled off and getting ready to start the construction and everything. Uh, and it was so different. I remember being able to see like little glimpses of the parade through like the main gate as you're looking you know, towards the train station, like almost to the entrance of Disneyland. I remember being able to look through and like catching a tiny little glimpse of the parade. And I was like, oh my God, this is gonna be crazy. These next three days are gonna be the most amazing days of my life. And they were. It seriously changed everything. The second I got into Disneyland, my mind was like, ah, this is crazy. Like just picked up the maps. Just those first memories of like, oh my God, where do I go? Where do I go? And it was, I was just in awe, like just the details. And that was one thing that actually has stuck with me was the level of detail that's put into all the work, just the facades, the theming, all of that that you see at a place like Disneyland that you don't see at like a county fair or you don't see at like, even a Six Flags doesn't have that level of theming and detail. And to me, that really stuck in my mind. And that's actually around the same time I got kind of started in artwork all my life. I had kind of dabbled in artwork, just little things here and there, little crafts. When Lion King came out, I made little tiny clay figures of, you know, Simba and Pumbaa. And I thought they were really good for, you know, a kid in third or fourth grade. They, I thought they were really good. I wish I had pictures of them now. They probably look not so great. But I've always kind of dabbled in things like that. When a movie or something like that really pulls me in, I want to recreate it. I want to be a part of that world, if you will. Uh, so that's what I did with Lion King, that's what I did with other movies growing up, and it just it just sucked me in. And the second I had Disneyland, the movies is one thing, but the second I had Disneyland now to go off of, and I had all this like inspiration for things, it was it was just amazing. It was so crazy. Uh, but back then when I went, it was then the 45th anniversary in the year 2000. So the first like real real time I went was the 35th anniversary when I was six, and then I got to go again during the 45 years of Magic Celebration. This is my autograph book, and I've got a lot of cool autographs in here. It says, this book belongs to Dano. They called me Dano way back then, too. Uh, first signature, of course, Mickey Mouse. Your pal, Mickey Mouse. Uh, I got some cool Pluto. Now, the reason I'm going through it, because you can get a lot of these nowadays, uh, Timon, you don't really see Timon in the parks anymore. Another Mickey Mouse, because why not? Mulan, you see Mulan, you see Rafiki. This one, right here. I don't know if you guys can read it or see it. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Hopefully, if not, I'll put a picture of it up. But it says, Lag me up the mime. Way back when, and I really wish they would bring this back, but way back when, they used to have a mime wandering around New Orleans Square. And I remember we had dinner, like one of the first nights we had dinner on our trip, we were at the French market. I got some weird lasagna thing, because they sold that way back when. And I got like a big old piece of cake. I was like, I'm going big, let's do this. Big old piece of cake, lasagna. I had a mint julep, which you could get mint julep from the fountain. And it was like a large mint julep, not like today where they have to be the small ones. And they're nice, the small ones, because you know you get the ice and it's like the cool round ice. You get the cherry and the little bamboo stick thing. And that's cool. I didn't get that my very first mint julep. It was a, But it was a big mint julep, which I kind of wish I could get a big mint julep now. Either way, we were sitting down for dinner and this mime came up to our table. His name was Lagniape. Lagniape. I'm not sure how you say that, but I think he might have trapped me in a box while I was trying to eat my raviolis or lasagna, whatever it was. And I was like, ah, get, get out the book. Because one thing I did when I was very little, I do remember this, it's actually kind of coming back to me now. When I was really little, I had another one of these uh, autograph books from when I was six, and I really wish I knew where that one was. I think that one's long gone. But. When I had it, uh, I would have everybody sign it. I had the guy on Big Thunder Mountain sign it. I had the janitor sign it. I was asking everybody to sign my book. So when I went back later, I kind of did the same thing. I asked everyone to sign my book. I got Max, Maximilian, Goofy Son, Mr. Smee, Captain Hook, I haven't seen them in a while, Foul Fellow, Geppetto, Br'er Rabbit, Gideon, I kinda wanna show you all of them. Uh, there's a Goofy, 
Esmeralda. I even met Esmeralda from Hunchback way back then. This is cool. I, I, I haven't got one of these in a long time where they do a personal message. But this one says, to Dano, stay cool, heart, Donald Duck, number one. I love when they do stuff like that. When they take the time to read the front of your book, see what your name is, and write you a special message. Like, that's, that's Disney magic right there. That is definitely Disney magic. Bugs Rock, signed Flick. That's really cool. I got one from Dale. It says, hey, Dano, respect acorns with a Z. Yeah, it's a backwards S or a Z. But it says, love Dale. Like, I don't know if, I, I gotta fill up my new one because I actually have a new autograph book because this is like a tradition now. I got a 60th edition, 60th anniversary autograph book, which I'm gonna be using this year to get as many characters as I can. Hopefully I'll get the same kind of memories and cool notes in it that I did way back in 2000. We'll see. Also got the Mad Hatter. Now I think there's a funny part in here from the Mad Hatter. Let me see if I can find it. But if I remember correctly, I had, it might, it might even be in a different autograph book because I got one a couple years later. But I met the Mad Hatter and I asked him to sign. I said, oh, could you sign this? And being the Mad Hatter, he writes T-H-I-S really big, hands it back to me. And I look at it and it just says this. I'm like, oh, I, I got you, Mad Hatter guy. He's, yeah, I'm crazy too. But, so he signed the Mad Hatter thing for me, it was cool. Now this one's funny, best wishes Dano from London Bobby. London Bobby was one of the uh, Main Street security guys kind of just walking around. And that was really cool to have him sign it. I had Alice sign it. Oh, this was one of my favorites. This is actually kind of, this guy was cool. Um, it says, to Daniel, have a great time here at the Disneyland Resort from Terrence Tucker. And Terrence Tucker was, uh, he was a guy who was just standing in front of Tarzan's treehouse. They used to have a cast member standing in front of the treehouse right where the stairs are. And he would tell people, hey, this is an attraction. You can come do this. Because it was still fairly new at the time. Uh, and they were trying to tell people to get him to go up there and look at it. And he'd like flag me down. I was like, hey, do you want to go check out the treehouse? It's up there. It's cool. And I was like, you are really enthusiastic, sir. I would like for you to sign my book. And he was like blushing. He was like honored. He's like, oh, really? Like he was, it was a cool moment. I was like, oh, I made his day. He made my day. It was cool. That was the cool Disney magic. And then I wanted to reenact my Big Thunder Mountain signing and have the guy who, you know, dispatched the trains sign my book. So I asked him to and I get this tiny, dinky little squiggle of just his name. Way to go, Matthew. I think that was the last one. I might have killed it for my trip. I was like, all right, all right, um, I've got enough signatures in here. But I hope there's still those cool magical things where they write your name in it, and I hope they don't just do it for kids. Because at this point, I, I mean, I was like 16 or something, but I was like a, I was still a kid, like a punk kid. I had my cool like jacket on with all my patches and studs and everything, and like mohawk or whatever. I think I did have a mohawk back then. And they still would do cool things like this. You know, it wasn't just for kids, it was for the people, because I'm still a kid, I'm, I still love this stuff. And it was really cool. Uh, one of the other souvenirs that I kept from back then is a one of my very first Esmeralda prophecies. Now, if you walk into Main Street, right on the arcade, which has changed so much in the years, it used to actually be a penny arcade where you could play tons of penny games, and there was like 10 or 11 of those little movie things where you drop a dime in, and it shows you a weird, creepy movie flip book thing. There was one of those old-timey things with the electric ones that shocks you. There was a golf game. There was all kinds of cool stuff. Now, it's more of a candy shop, and that's about it, but it's still pretty cool. Either way, they still have Esmeralda. Thank you, they still have Esmeralda. I'm so glad she's still around. This is my very first Esmeralda prophecy. It says, there's very little that I can tell you because you are so good. <laughs> that's that's me. That's That sounds pretty accurate, I would say. You have great gentleness and pure moral principles. A merciful, affectionate, and constant heart. Slightly melancholy. I, th I think that's kind of accurate, actually. Uh, the next one, inventive genius of mechanical arts. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with that one. I'll take genius any day. Uh, are independent and have little patience with conventional ways of living. Lover of music, very changeable in opinion. That's about right. After middle age, you will inherit a fortune which you will have to defend in court. That sounds gross, and I'm kind of dreading that if that's true. It says, I predict that you will have great success in life in general. Very small changes in your daily routine are necessary to bring you to the top of the ladder. These are the most motivational things ever. I've never gotten one of these that says like, you are doomed. 
Esmeralda is a sweetheart. Thank you, Esmeralda. I hope you never go away because you are like a real Disneyland tradition to me. Uh, one of the other cool things, and this I found when I was looking for, uh, remember that video I did a couple weeks ago where I was showing you guys how to pack? I went and pulled out a bunch of old souvenirs for that. Um, and I found some cool things, and these are, this is actually, I only have one of them from this trip, but from my very first trip, it's dated 6-6-2000. This is a Space Mountain Fast Pass from way back when. Now this was before you could get a new Fast Pass. This is like one of the first years Fast Pass even existed. And it says, please return anytime between 10.40 a.m. and 11.40 a.m. And there's a note on here, head on over to Interventions, where innovation meets invention. Sadly, Interventions is now gone. Oh, everything's disappearing. And it has, you know, it tells you to go somewhere else. Instead of, hey, come back at this time, do this thing, do this, do this. And it's kind of cool. Now, one of the other cool things that I got as a souvenir from Disneyland way back when is this cool little coin back in the Penny Arcade. They had this little machine that you could put in, I think like 50 cents or something like that. And it would stamp out this little fancy coin and you could put letters on it. And this one has like a little message from my girlfriend at the time on there. And you could put like all kinds of cool stuff. It was real easy to mess up. I have one from a friend of mine who visited like a year later and she brought it back to me and it says like, your butt sucks or something weird like that. But it's got like a V instead of a U for sucks. I don't know, it's weird. We just had weird messages we'd send to each other. We were in high school and crazy, so what are you gonna do? But it's cool, it's got a little Disney castle on it, and it's got a little Mickey Mouse on the other side. And it's just really cool, like it was a neat little souvenir that was cheap and simple. And it was like, cool, and I'm just sad that they don't have stuff like that as much anymore. Uh, what's another thing? Okay, so I was looking through my old souvenirs. This one's from actually a couple years later, but it is another autograph book because I love autograph books. And I think this is the one that has what I was talking about. Where is it, where is it? Oh, see this was a little bit later. This actually came from once California Adventure was open and I even have little stickers. This one is from Princess Ada. I used to get cool little stickers of the characters. I got one from Flick that says, Bugs Kick Grass. Get it? That's pretty cool. Sandra from Storybook Land. Thank you, Sandra. Good cast member who signed my book and was very nice. Baloo. I got a signature from Baloo. That's pretty cool. I like Baloo. He's like pretty much me. This is it. This is where Mr. Guy wrote this. Mr. Mad Hatter wrote this on my book. Smarty. And then he writes his name all fancy with like a hat and cool signature. That's awesome. Tommy the something and Jesse. I don't know who that is. Tommy the horse and Jesse. I actually asked, uh, you know the horse-drawn carriage? on Main Street. I asked the uh, the guy who was, you know, driving that thing to sign my book as well, and he signed it on behalf of the horse, Tommy the horse, and Jesse, that's really awesome. That's a cool memory to have, the fact that, like, that's why I like these, is because I can look back at them later. I'm actually looking at this for the first time in a long time, and I'm seeing some really cool things in here that I'm like, oh, Cruella de Vil, best wishes. No, best to all from Charles. I don't know who Charles is. I don't remember Charles, but it's a very nice message. I have one that says Albert CM, cast member. That's really cool. It's very simple, but at least he wrote CM. That way, like, they know. This, I don't know what that is. A kazoo! Okay, this, this straight up says kazoo. I know there was a kazoo from the Flintstones, but I don't remember there being a kazoo in Disney at all. What the heck is that from? Weird. Now this is a cool part. This is something that they don't do anymore. This is after California Adventure had opened because it says Disneyland Resort on it. But this is a happy birthday sticker. This is from when I was 19. 19 year old. I'm a really old man now. I'm that old, but still, this was a while back. And it says 19 Daniel and it says happy birthday. This is before the buttons. We used to get stickers way back then. And I was smart enough to put my sticker in my autograph book. That's genius, because now I get to keep it. I got a little sticker that says, I met Donald. That's, that's why these things are awesome. These are like the coolest souvenir you can get. I have more Esmeralda's prophecies and stuff. But it's the, you know, it's these little details, these little things that like I keep and I don't ever want to let go of. I even have older fast passes. 
um, not older, but newer Fast Passes from 2000. I've got one from April 8th, 2001 for Splash Mountain. I've got March 24th, 2002 from Soarin' Over California. Now keep in mind, these were all when I lived in Albuquerque, New Mexico. These were big trips for me. It's different when you live in SoCal or you even live in Vegas here and you can go somewhat frequently. When you can't go that often and you haven't been in years, it is a really special thing to go. And that's like, that's what made it so awesome. It was the fact that like, I didn't know when I was gonna go back, I hadn't been there in years, and it just changed everything. I came back with such a like renewed sense of detail. Every, to me, everything was in the details, and that's kind of followed. And it's inspired me, it's kept me, like with my artwork, all the stuff that I'm doing, what I try to make separate it from other people's artwork, because you can go to Etsy, you can go to all those places and look in all the shops, and everyone and their mom's painting Disney stuff on shoes and making Disney things. And some of them are really, really awesome, and some of them don't quite have the level of detail as other people's. And I want to make that what separates me from the others, is that little bit of, that level of detail, that extra detail, those little things that just kind of make it that much more special. And to me, that's it. That's like the, and it, that all came from Disneyland. That all came from my very first trip to Disneyland, and it stuck with me to this day. And now here I am, older, and my living room, like my whole home, is Disney. I mean, this is my desk area. In fact, let's let's turn this into a walking vlog. Can we do that? Let's go all walking vlog style in the middle of a semi-scripted video. Is that allowed? Can I do that? Let's go take a look real quick. This is way different, I never do this. But let's go take a look at, look at that. My, this is my living room, pirates. I got pirates over there, I got tiki room. I got my other tiki room thing over there, more tiki. On this side, I've got a Haunted Mansion poster. There's my Indian painting, now see by the Haunted Mansion poster. There are those tiny little portraits, see all those tiny little portraits? Those are things you can find in the Haunted Mansion. I've got a big Thunder Mountain poster over here because this is kind of a uh, New Orleans Square Pirates Haunted Mansion segue into Frontierland area. If you want to see something really cool, I don't know if it'll show so well down there, but my little outlet, that's a golden horseshoe. A little Disney feng shui action. Uh, there's my cool little balloons I put up. Now this is my Fantasyland wall, which still needs a little bit of work. You can see I've got cool family portraits. There's some family portraits I put on a cool frame and there's another crazy portrait. And a Matterhorn. This is all fantasy land in this side. And now this side I'm actually working on the next part. I haven't put up much yet, but it's actually by my entertainment center. See all this entertainment center is very blank and dead over here. There's a Space Mountain poster back there. There's gonna be more Star Tours-y stuff right in this area, but I figured why not make the entertainment center with all the video games and stuff my Tomorrowland Because when you first enter into my home What do you see? The train station. There's a silhouette from Main Street, so it's very like I say Disney feng shui where you walk into my house and There's Main Street and then you head down Main Street and you hit all the other lands, and there's all the other lands. And pardon my mess, my home's a little bit of a mess right now. We're moving stuff around, we're reorganizing things, and it's just, and I got video stuff everywhere, and art projects all over the place. And here I am, I'm back in the little filming studio area where I do all my work and all my stuff. Guys, I hope you have enjoyed watching this. I have enjoyed doing this and talking to you for probably longer than I should have. Thank you so much for making it this far. I love you guys. I'm glad we can share the same love of Disney. And if you're here on the Dano channel watching this video and you aren't here for the Disney stuff, that's amazing because I'm not sure what else it was that brought you here that made you wanna listen to me bramble for so long, but I do on occasion do stuff that's not Disney related. I'll do unboxings. In fact, a little later I might even record that Loot Crate unboxing that I've been meaning to do. But check out my channel. Go scoop down through. There's artwork, there's other video adventures of my family going to New York, other cool places like that. Search my channel, look at all the other videos I've put up. I'm so glad to have you guys here. Thank you for sharing the Disney love with me. I love you guys. If you're new, hit the subscribe button. 
If you're watching it, hit the like button. That thumbs up always helps. The more of those thumbs up you hit, the more likely new people will get to see my video. Also, if you share my videos on social networking, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff, it is always really appreciated. It helps me get exposure. It brings more people into the Dano Channel family and we can get more subscribers and have a bigger, crazier, funner, awesome party. I really do love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. For me, without first consulting my mom. That's, That's a very good point. What do you have in your hand right now? Some postcards. You know, it's very interesting. You have postcards. I don't have as many as you do, but I happen to have a postcard.